Uh, why don't we start with what the situation was at Polonia when you first arrived? So kind of keep give people the, the background situation that you kind of came into and also what you where you were coming from when you joined up. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. So the first time I came across uh, IBB Polonia London Volleyball Club was in uh, 2012. Uh, the club was at the time playing uh, in the English uh, volleyball, volleyball Cup final. And at the time I was working as a cameraman uh, for a Polish broadcaster, Polsat. So the Polonia has a Polish roots. It was a club founded in 1973. So we got a call that we have to cover the story as a, as, as, a, as a news crew. So I walked into the training court. It was probably 8 or 9 p.m. A small training court. A nice group of people that I've later learned were quite experienced players. But what I also found out from one of the coaches that was coaching at the time uh, was that, that the club was founded in 1973. So it was in existence for 39 years when I found out about it. And I lived in London for uh, eight years at the time. I consider myself quite up to date with what's going on in, 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 in Polish or general in, in sport communities. And I've never heard about IBB Polonia. So the, the, then later when I found out that the players were actually paying uh, to play, uh, covering uh, all the costs, whole hire, travel kit, uh, you name it. And the level was okay. I knew some of the names fr fr from Poland and, you know, knowing how big the sport in Poland is, something didn't click for me there. But, you know, we, we, we went on with the, our uh, broadcasting lives. Uh, we left Polonia and that was 2012. So Olympic year. So then I went to El Scort, watched a lot of volleyball matches and remembered about IBB Polonia being there in this small hall uh, with no finances. And then I saw, you know, 14,000 people watching volleyball in London. So I thought something might, might be an opportunity there. So uh, I, I phoned back uh, the coaches. They said, yeah, why don't you come aboard? So it was a well-established club when I met it uh, in, in existence for 39 years, quite successful in England on the sport level, but not very advanced on, in terms of uh, commercialization. Sure. So uh, what was your kind of remit or your plan or your aspiration when you first took over? Well, initially it was just to help a bit with financials uh, because I knew there are easy steps that the club like that, especially with this rich history of, of, of existence and rich history of success. So we've started small. Uh, there was, you know, no, no structure to that. Uh, we've started with uh, making sure our uh, social media is uh, under control and, and, and looked, looks okay. Our website, uh, we started sending press releases from, from time to time, you know, having some kind of uh, media background and uh, a bit of crea creativity, you know, we were just, we were able to improve our brand because that was very important. At the time, not many people knew about volleyball being at all in existence in, in, in the United Kingdom. So what we were doing were, we were making sure that their first contact with volleyball is a good one. So they are not disappointed with low or poor quality photos on social media or, you know, poor quality website. Those first points of contact, we had to make sure they scream quality. And uh, that's exactly what we did. Small steps, small steps. So once we had few press, press releases out, we started gathering more fans in the venue. And trust me, the venue was, you know, volleyball court plus one meter around it so that was a you know a very very poor quality gym but people were were coming in because they were curious they were interested so you know then we had to start then then one thing led to another once we had fans in we had to think about the fans experience so you know we had djs in uh, we've had some food trucks outside the school uh, where the sports hall was but yeah the, the majority of things we were doing initially were the small things that every club can do and and the, and the things were free at the time so so Social media, website, and just quality, because that's something potential sponsors, and that's one of the reasons why I got involved, is was to get some extra money into the club. So sponsors were asking how many fans you've got. Of course, we didn't have many fans at the matches, so that wasn't something we could uh, sell. But we had a 
we started getting some online following. So that's why it was important. So one thing led to another small sponsorship, then a bit bigger sponsorship, then um, huge sponsorship, something we thought it's huge because, you know, we, we doubled our budget uh, by signing one contract. At the time we thought, wow, that must be huge. But obviously it's never enough. <laughs> in, in, you know, in sports, you can spend uh, whatever you want. But those initial ideas was to really gather what we have in terms of uh, contact points for fans, so mainly online, and make sure that that all looks okay and probably a bit better than we are. So we were trying to make sure that we are faking it till we are making it. So basically we just, you know, did what many people do. <laughs> we made sure that we look great on social media. So <laughs> it's like people do as well, you know, taking photos yeah. <laughs> and posting them on Instagram and uh, making sure, uh, you know, that the friends are jealous how, how, what lives they live. Right. So it sounds like a lot of it was just really making the, the presentation of the club much more professional looking than, exactly. than what it happened before. Exactly. And that's why, you know, and it was eight years, eight, seven years ago when we were all, you know, when we started doing this. So it seems, well, maybe a bit, a long time ago, but I'm a bit disappointed also that, you know, majority of clubs that keep saying we need more money in the sport and, you know, we would love to have, or sponsors, you know, tell us, how did you get sponsors? I keep telling them, guys, look at your social media. The last post is, you know, from 20 weeks, you know, uh, ago. And it's, it's, it's some, you know, blurred photo of you at the bar. So this is something that people will look at. Of course, you know, it's, it's nice that there is a social side to, to volleyball in England at every level, and that's very important. But the first photo shouldn't maybe be blurred photo at, at, at the bar. So, so those things are for me very easy, and that's why I really appreciate that I'm able to share this here with you guys. And I hope you didn't expect me to talk about uh, high-level volleyball coaching, but it's very important that whoever is running the club with aspirations understands that initially it's very easy to make a rapid progress because at the very early stages, small things will make big differences. Mm -hmm. I, I think. I think. It's an interesting thing to, to talk about with people in terms of things like, like sponsorships is there's a tendency for people to think in terms of what's in it for me without thinking about it, what's in it for the sponsor. Because the sponsors are not generally just going to give you money out of the kindness of their hearts. Some will, for sure. But even in those cases, there needs to be some sort of affinity. There needs to be some sort of indication that at a minimum, you're not going to make them look bad, probably. <laughs> You're going to make them look good. Fair enough. Well, and and then and then you know th those initial sponsorships we had, you know, coming back to to the history of of IBB Polonia, we were uh, well. That, that's that that was very important. We are already able to show to sponsors some added value. So, I, I read somewhere, someone, and I think you will be able to tell me whose quote is that where the professionalism start because a lot of people think oh, if i get money i will start being professional or yeah acting professional but we thought we will do it the other way the professionalism starts here it's the mindset so however we started doing things professionally before we got paid for them so then when we approach sponsors we were able to present them with uh, a certain amount of data, be it limited, but the data at the time that they would understand. And of course, we signed contracts that were business contracts. So maybe to add as well, it's, it's quite important that, you know, one of our initial sponsors was a company called Capital Business Links, and they were uh, an accountancy. So when we signed the contract, when we started, you know, negotiating about the contract, they asked, okay, so what's your uh, legal status? being accountants for them, they only deal with LTD companies, limited companies. And we were at the time a group of friends. Something that I've learned to later learned is called an associated, uh, 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 unincorporated association. So basically every, every person was responsible for 
mm, the, the, the club didn't have its own entity. Every director was responsible personally for whatever they signed. So we had to get this in order as well. Sure. So that's very right. important as well. You, you, you start talking to businesses and you need to be presented to them in the way that they understand. So they are used to signing contracts with companies. We turned ourselves in a company. That gave a lot of security. But it's very important to first uh, understand the needs of the partner, of the sponsor, uh, make sure that uh, we can somehow deliver those uh, needs uh, or, or match those needs and, and help them to achieve their goals. And it's important to talk to them so we know what their goals are. Yeah, I know Mark Lebedew has written and or commented on what professionalism actually means, and it doesn't really have a lot to do with money. Um, that's just an outcome. Yeah. Um, okay, so so at that at that stage, you know, those early years when you're you know working on the professionalism of the club and just generally trying to to present yourself or, or fake it till you make it sort of thing. What were the like competitive? Um, of, of the club at that point were, were you thinking beyond England yet or were we still kind of focused on, on what was going on in England well we were also always and we are always thinking you know a few years few years uh, forward the danger with whatever we're thinking about is that that it usually comes quicker or earlier uh, than we anticipated so you know initially we also we really wanted to you know regain English championship, regain English cups. And we were lucky that, you know, in year one with, with, our, uh, with our initial sponsors, we, we, we managed to win the English championship. But all, always we were thinking, you know, beyond that, what, what we can do. And, you know, uh, at the time, the best joke was that, that one day we'll play uh, Champions League. Ha <laughs> ha. And, um, yeah, you, you know, and one thing led to another we've started obviously you know the, the the bigger ambitions you have uh, the potentially bigger product you, ha you you have to sell to your sponsors as well so uh then our current sponsor came on board uh ibb builders merchants uh with the, with its owner uh jacek ambroge and jacek uh, you know has this attitude that it's all or nothing uh in in his life or in his business life so f with, with him uh, financially involved in the club initially as a sponsor uh, now as a main shareholder uh, but we can talk about this transition later uh, we really put our ambitions on steroids because uh, whatever IBB Builders Merchants is doing or whatever Jacek Ambrosi was doing in, their, in, in his career before was always uh, the top, top ambition so um, but when I mean the top when I say the top I also mean the marketing or uh, commercial offering that the, 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 the club has but in sport it's 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 quite easy it's quite an easy business because i think it's uh, you need sport results uh, to attract fans and uh, you know you have once you have fans uh, you attract the media once you have media you attract um, you attract the sponsors then you have more money to uh, invest and you know set your uh, um, sporting ambitions higher and higher so you know gradually step by step um, we were we were aiming higher but the problem with us is that we are never we don't wait to be ready. We think, let's do it. Because, you know, if you wait for things to, you know, stars to align and things to happen, I, I don't think you, you will ever be ready. So we've, we've started uh, competing in international tournaments and that was a Challenge Cup uh, in 2015, I think. So quite, uh, quite early in, in, in our development. Because the question was, why not? <laughs> right. I mean... Uh I think you have a similar attitude as the one I have, which is if you don't try things, you're never going to learn what's possible, what you need to get better at, how you can do it better the next time, where you can, where you can actually go, what the possibilities really are. You wait until things are perfect. A, things will, may never be perfect. And B, okay, what do you learn along the way? Well, I've never played uh, volleyball. <laughs> I'm disappointing your audience more and more, <laughs> but what I love about the sport and, you know, what I loved about uh, the, my, my first contact with, with, with IBB Polonia was that, the, you know, the, the players, 
they, they were you know they're hard workers and and you know they were they were it, it, as i said it was 8 p.m in the evening 9 p.m they all had families so it was it wasn't easy for them it wasn't uh you know something that you know their wives were probably encouraging them to do i know you know half of half of uh, my players uh, wives you know uh, hated the club at the time because you know they were kept away from home l late but especially in sport it's important you know to take risks try new ideas and you know like it's exactly like in volleyball you don't really have that much time during the actual game to think about your next move and you know sometimes the risks you know they don't pay off but short term but long term they always do okay so 2015 you're in you're in the challenge cup uh what was that what was that experience like in terms of both i mean both volleyball wise but also the business side of things well b both super scary for me because you know at the time we had uh you know we were okay team in terms of but you know of course we always have limited resources you, you never have enough resources in in the, well in any business that, that you are growing so you you have to multitask and uh, all of a sudden we've understood that the uh, european volleyball confederation you know requires a certain number of people to be present uh, so that led to some you know recruitment of, of 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 people but it was always scary but uh we enjoy scary so um you know players were able to focus on trainings but one of the ideas we had and then again it comes to the why not uh philosophy we had to play our first home game but we we didn't have a venue that meet met criteria we didn't have a crew to build the court but we had a friends in 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 poland in pg scrabble hat this you know the the, the the most uh successful volleyball club in in poland of, of the 20th 20th or i think no 21st century so we thought, okay, can we borrow your venue for for one of our matches? So they were like, okay, you want to play home match, London home match in Poland? We said, why not? So we went with that to CV. Uh, of course, they you know uh, rejected it initially, but then they started you know listening, started uh, listening to you know what what the idea is, and you know the match would be televised. That was important for us because if, you know if we played in Poland, we knew that Polsat Sport would uh, televise the match. So our viewers, many more viewers from England would be able to, to watch this match uh, compared to, you know, if we played it in England, but we didn't know where in England we would play that anyway. So at the time we thought, okay, we'll play one round. Uh, we will, uh, you know, we will, we will be out of the competition and we will carry on with our lives. Uh, but you know players had had other ideas so uh the first round we played in 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 uh in in, in hungary fino kaposvar so i understand you, you you one of the current coaches uh was your guest recently i'm, I'm looking forward to, to listening to this podcast because that's interesting so you know we were against a team that was well established in this in the, in the city that or in the country that volleyball is much more recognized and much more supported uh, than in England. So we thought, okay, we will go there, learn our lesson, come back and, um, you know, see what we've learned from that. So, you know, we lost uh, three, uh, zero or three, one. No, we, we lost three, zero, I think in, in Kaposva, all planned or under control. That's exactly what we expected. So, and then, then we flew to Poland to play in Bohatów. So Bohatów, you know, made sure, PG Scrub Bohatów made sure that the, the match was properly marketed there among their fans of course Polsat was there on site with, with their cameras um, and that was one of the best matches I ever w watched because we managed to win 3-1 <laughs> we managed to win a, a golden set and then and we progressed further uh, and for 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 just for this moment I, I still remember it was you know it, it was a huge reward so I I, I already ran, learned that in business and in in, in sports you know the fortune rewards uh, the brave because w were we ready as a club to compete in the challenge cup probably not on the sport level clearly we were but you know we progressed further so it was a nice adventure uh, you know early stages were played on uh, on the weekends so that was good because don't forget at the time 100% of my players were 
doing something outside of volleyball and still that's the case but we are well it's still the case with some players but we are trying to lower and lower the number of of people who, who who've got you know professional work arrangements outside of volleyball but at the time everyone was uh, was you know and and that, we were quite proud of that we used this to our advantage as well in in, in business in communication in, in marketing because you know we were Proud that we have we had bankers, uh, business consultants, uh, drivers, and and other guys really pulling f- forward to grow the club because we at every stage we also made sure that players are on board with what we are trying to do because we never wanted just to play volleyball today with whatever we are doing we were always doing thinking about the future. So we were asking players about this extra commitment from their wives or from their from their jobs, uh, from extra understanding for extra understanding. So in the future, players in England don't have to make as as much uh, commitment or as much sacrifice as they were making. So, yeah, it was nice adventure, and there we were. You know, uh, it was on the twentieth of December, I remember, for two thousand fifteen, and then we found ourselves that we have a month to organize. A second next round of the cup right. and uh part of the deal we made with cv was that that we only play one match abroad <laughs> we'll be <laughs> sure that we won't progress right. so you know we had christmas so you know all companies everything is the countries are closed you know it's you can't negotiate everything we were we had budget shortages at the time uh, but you know we we had to get ready on the first of february 2016 uh, we played our first uh, Challenge Cup uh, match in London. Okay, how was how how was it getting that arranged? Well, you know, it's uh, I st- I still remember those, you know, between Christmas and uh, and New Year's Eve meetings with, with my sponsors, saying, "Guys, I need another, I need another, you know, big chunk of of, of cash for us to travel." Uh, to Holland at the time, uh, Dreisma Dynamo, uh, and to organize a home match as well to promote it and 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 you know do 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 all the stuff we have to do as a as a host. Um, so you know they said yeah of course I'll do it. So uh, you know Jacek is as I said IBB they are they are keen on taking risks. Let, let, let's do it because after this match don't forget we 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 went into the round against Kaposvar in that was played in Poland we were 3-0 down and and we we won it 3-1 and we won a golden set and the match was televised so i must have got i don't know 300 text messages with people like that's unbelievable that's that's amazing and you know it all it started feeling that what we are doing is already you know attracting a, a, a you know a bit traction because yep. The volleyball level was okay, I presume, but the emotions are always the same. Mm. If it's you know, if it's the World Cup final, if 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 the teams leave their hearts on court, the emotions are always the same, and fans like emotions. So we thought, yeah, you know, that was that was a nice indicator that there is a potential. So we made the next step. Uh, you know, we opened some doors in 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 London Mayor's office with the need for for the venue uh at you know a bit a bit fi- better financial rates uh yeah so you know we of course we got help from uh, english volleyball association as well volleyball england at the time they provided us uh with taraflex floor and you know a crew and and, and people to build the court as well so you know they were understanding that by supporting uh us they they support the development of of, of english volleyball and uh, and again you know the match was a big success uh, in terms of a turnout because we've sold out uh we had 1300 people on wednesday evening that time in, in london and um, there was a queue of people that we had to turn away from a volleyball match in in, in london so we really liked that uh we thought it's it's a good you know see it's it's a good uh uh good uh, you know it's it's a good indication that there is a big potential for for the sport because with whatever we are doing we also we or we always keep thinking it's not about playing volleyball it's about building a sustain, sustainable volleyball event business in 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 london so we need a lot of tickets sold we need those high high level matches to be played so i think you know, we got as far as we could, 
against Dreisma, we, we, we lost 3-0, I think, in Holland. And then we won 3-2 in England. But that wasn't enough for us to progress. Uh, but at the time, I think we had, we had enough. <laughs> we didn't really uh, think it would be, you know, beneficial for us to go even further. Sure. Uh, you know, for various reasons, but you know, mainly organization and, and financial. Because unfortunately, you know, at, at at the time, events were costing us more than we could recoup in prizes or, or, or tickets sold. But but then again, we've proven to ourselves, we've proven to our sponsors, uh, we've we've got a lot of good quality photos f- from the event. We've shown that there is appetite in England or in London for high-level volleyball events if they are, if they are competitive. Um, just to give people some insight, uh, and, and we'll, this will come, probably come up again later when we talk about Champions League, but can you kind of describe what the the expenses are of playing CEV and what what clubs get from CEV anything um, for for taking part in the competitions? Well, first of all, Challenge Cup 2015. So majority, well, you have to international transfers. That's the major. Well, that's one of the major costs that that you have to pay. So it's nine hundred euros to CV, but I know they distribute it between federations as well, plus whatever the federation is asking. In England, we are quite lucky. <laughs> we are a low level uh, federation, so the maximum transfer fee that foreign federations can ask uh, is quite low compared to, you know, those higher level of international federations. But of course, the interna- those international transfer fees only apply to your players if, if, uh, their, nas- if their federation of origin is not, uh, in our case, Volleyball England. So basically to foreigners right. who started playing volleyball outside of, of England. Sure. You know, and then you are responsible for all the costs associated with uh, away travel for your team to uh to the match that's why it's so risky for the team to sign up early because you don't know how far you have to travel right <laughs> so you know you keep you keep uh, praying about uh you know close uh close yeah. uh, competitors and you know then you have to commit also all the you cover all the costs of uh of the home match and then you know in terms in in, in the case of, of challenge cup the there is a in the, the requirements are a bit lower than in Champions League, but you know you, you still need a certain level of, of, of security in place, uh, announcers, scoreboard operator, DJ. Uh, you, you know you need a venue as well, and you know we don't own our venue, so everything we do we has to be hired by by the hour, uh, um, and 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 then. Yeah, so that's that these are the these would be the major costs, and of course you can add to that as much as you want. You know, dressing up the hall or or you know, bringing better or uh, more uh, expensive uh, expensive DJs or put it in be played in bigger venues. But the majority is home away and 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 the various fees, which uh, with international transfer fees being the biggest. If uh, you want, I can you know the Champions League is slightly different, but in uh, in yeah. Yeah, we can we can get to the Champions League uh, a little bit later, but I just want to make it kind of clear to folks that the clubs who play in CEV competition don't actually get paid. Like the CEV is not helping out with travel expenses, uh, and 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 there's there's is there anything in the way of, of prize money for for winning a round or anything along those lines? Well, there is some prize money. Okay. When we when we played, must have been around one thousand five hundred euro per per match. Okay, so not even going to come close to to covering expenses is basically the point. No, 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 no way. The, the only way you can you're think. entirely reliant on basically ticket sales for the home and any sport and any sort of sponsorship that that you that you might arrange. Exactly. Especially with, with those lower level, because yes, to put it to a perspective, we're talking about the lowest level European volleyball tournament, which is called CV Challenge Cup. The second tier, one above that is CV Cup. 
and then at the top we have uh, volleyball Champions League. So, yeah, the, I think that this year the total pool, the total prize money for uh, Challenge Cup was around half a million euro. So for all the stages plus plus the winners. Right. Yeah, which is when you, when you break it out, it's not very much. That isn't very much, and uh, you know you you have to be really, especially in those setups where you are commercially renting, you know, the hall from 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 the city or f from the operator. It, it's really hard right. to to turn profit. Yes. All right. So let's let's start walking forward. Um, you know, what did you guys did you guys continue on with Challenge Cup in twenty sixteen? Well, or that's the thing. No, that's the thing. We we were too tired uh, emotionally and uh, financially, <laughs> and when and, and we didn't continue, we we thought, okay, let's let's try let's try something let's try something else. So for one year, uh, we instead of entering uh, European tournaments, well, the CV European tournaments, uh, we've just focused on on English league. Mm -hmm. And what is more, we focused on the commercialization side of that. We entered into agreement with Polsat, the Polish broadcaster, uh, that they would televise our volleyball England matches from England in Poland. Uh, we didn't have any broadcaster interested in England, so we thought, you know, why not? We'll we'll bring it to a market that is already that has already appetite for volleyball. And Polsat said, of course, why not? You know, as long as you pay for the production <laughs> and beam it to us over satellite, we will show it uh, to our viewers. So that was something we focused on that on uh, that year. Uh, we always want to do a bit better. Every season we want to do a bit better. So that season we didn't focus on on the sport level. We focused on the on the on the commercial side of operations, and that that again led to some you know amazing ideas and and, and some amazing uh, uh, knowledge really. Well, uh, yeah, let's, let's go into that a little bit in terms of, I mean, what is, you know, you talked about Pulsar required you to, to pay for production. So what exactly does that involve? Well, uh, we had to organize a local production company that will be familiar with uh, volleyball matches. So that already tells you that we had a big task on our hands because th there isn't a crew like that in the United Kingdom. So we had to, we had to coach, uh, coach the crew ourselves. So first we had to find, a, find the right partner who is keen to, to grow, who is, you know, and, you know, by getting quotes from those productions company, I have to say they were, they were very, they, they varied, really. Some of them were, you know, acceptable. Some of them were, you know, just, just crazy money. I guess these people just, yeah. they would just ask for, for something and, and, and think whether they can, they can get it back. So we had to find a, a friendly production company. We found, we found a company like that, 24-7 uh, TV. That's what they're called. And, you know, they, they shown some volleyball before, but it wasn't up to, you know, volleyball... Uh, international volleyball broadcast standard requirements you know Polsat sure. is regarded as one of the top volleyball broadcasters in the world so they know what they're doing so they send a director here to London and uh, for our first televised match where the director was present in the venue and he was ensuring that you know the local production team is doing as good job as as possible uh, so you know you need uh, four manned cameras positioned around the court at various places you need a net cam net camera uh you need a replay machine uh you need on-screen graphics and you need a satellite you need a vision mixer with operators uh, sitting in the track outside a good lighting in a venue that helps as well and uh you need a satellite track to beam it over to the satellite so you know it's probably around on the budget 10 men at least production three to four vehicles um, yeah and don't forget we were doing it from a sports hall that we had hired for 10 hours a day so those sure. crews were under you know big time time pressure as well and uh, yeah. they're not used to working like that because they usually arrive the day before start with a T and time no 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 with, with you know with us at volleyball 2.0 we don't have much time we don't have much money but we we expect you know high level results and 
that was that was a big success because some of our matches were watched by more than 150,000 uh, viewers live in, in in Poland, and the deal we had with Polsat was that that wherever we want uh, outside of Poland to stream it, uh, we we can do it. So so we retained or you know our rights uh, to to the footage. So we were using various Facebook fan pages. We experimented with Unilad. But, you know, we would overlay it with our commentary, English commentary. We would have an English commentator in the venue. Polish commentator would be in Warsaw. So, you know, some of our matches were watched live by 180, 190,000 uh, viewers. And that's what sponsors like. Right, right, for sure. Okay, so that's 16, 17. You're, you're focusing on England. You're focusing on, you know, ex, you know growing the business itself. I know that you played Nevza 1819. Um, what about 1718? Were you still focused on England at the time? Maybe I jumped. Maybe I skipped one year, to be honest. Uh, uh, but but the, uh, 1819, we played Nevza. Yes, yes, right. 1819. So uh, 15, 16, we played uh, Challenge. 16. 16, 17, we had Polsat, and yeah, so we, we, I must have missed one year. So maybe oh, we I'm waited one maybe. year. Maybe okay. we waited one year be, be, between the Challenge Cup and the, and, and the broadcast. Uh, okay. But then the Nevza, yes, we, well, we knew, we knew from uh, the Challenge Cup experience that there is appetite for international volleyball in England. Mm -hmm. So we thought that play, by playing Nevza, which is a uh, zonal part, uh, Europe is divided into northern, southern, eastern, and, and western zonal confederations, uh, sub-confederations almost. They're all part of CEV, but, right. you know, this is like, I call it the fourth tier of the cups. So we've entered this. And, um, you know, at the time, we thought it wouldn't make that much of a difference to um, British fans whether this is a CV Cup or, you know, Challenge Cup, for them, it, for majority of fans, and I have to say, one of our aims is to bring non-volleyball people to volleyball. So f for them, it wouldn't make difference. It was just a European Cup that we entered. Right. So the idea was that we will uh, host uh, uh, the f qualification round in London to Nevza. So, and the requirements are much smaller. The financial cost is, is so much smaller. And in, in fact, the way it's done, and it's quite clever by Nevza because it, it's aimed by those, you know, low level financial leagues. Uh, all the money are pulled together. And at the end, whoever paid most get a bit of a refund. So everyone, every team, every participant ends up paying exactly the same. Okay. And, uh, and it's not a home away format. It's uh, weekend uh, you know, a couple of matches over the weekend competition. So it, 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 it's a bit clever. So, but that year when we entered, there wasn't any qualification round because of the lack of interested teams. We moved straight into uh, a final round. <laughs> so we thought, all right, while we are in the final round, we might as well win it. And we did. <laughs> that was yeah. the, first ever, uh, the first ever trophy won, a European trophy won by the English uh, volleyball club. And uh, we were proud of it. You know, we've entered it uh, as underdogs from a country that no one recognizes. And uh, yeah, I was there. I flew in after semifinal on, on, on Sunday. The, the semifinal was played on Saturday evening. And then uh, the following Sunday in the afternoon, the, the final was played. I promised my team that I'll be there if they play in the final. And I flew in the morning. It was in Denmark. And uh, and we won, and that, that that was amazing. They 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 brought a they they brought a trophy home. Uh, I don't know if uh, you know uh, anyone was would bet on us before we we've entered this competition. You know, it's Nevza is there are the countries from it's it's Northern European uh, zonal association. So we are looking at Sweden, Norway, Finland, uh, Dan Denmark. Uh, you know, so generally countries that are much higher or above England in, in, in the international uh, 
uh, tournaments, but we managed to win it. And, you know, that gave us, that, that gave us another boost. And I, and I have to say, yeah, you know, we were always trying to develop those two things in parallel, sport level and, uh, and then the commercial level. And one supports, you know, another, because the more money we have, the more, you know, ambitious players we can get. And it's not only about the salaries of the players. Players like to play competitively as well. So if we, you know, offer them something that none other clubs in England or in, in, in Europe can offer them and they just want to live in London, yeah, we would, we would, we would benefit from so, bad, so much uh, better players. And, you know, we sponsors uh, cover our travel costs, uh, cover our trainings, you know, players don't really have to worry about, about, about those costs. And, um, yeah, it's all, it's all supporting each other. Right. Yeah, for, for those, I'm guessing, probably don't know, um, the, the Volleyball England youth teams, traditionally, like every year Nevza hosts, I think it's U17 and U19 or, or junior and youth national team tournaments. So the national teams are always playing in Nevza every year. Um, and a lot of times they've, host, they've hosted the tournament because it happens in uh, October, if I remember correctly. Um, when I was coaching in Sweden, there were discussions as to whether our club was going to play in Nevza, but it's it's a financial commitment, as you said. You know, it's lower obviously than potentially playing in, in the CV stuff, but it's still a financial commitment. And so, you know, some clubs will do that, and other clubs will decide they don't want to do that. So, as you said, you you know, the year you guys did it, there 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 wasn't enough participation to do a qualification round, um, and that's that's obviously going to vary from year to year, uh, just to to let people know. Now. When did when did Jiva come into the equation? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah yeah. I mean, uh, we we again uh, we we were always open and ready for for everything. And if you keep your mind open, and uh, first of all, you send the right message to the world that you are ready for for new opportunities. And, and and secondly, you know, people more people know about this uh, this attitude you have. So, I met Jiba in Poland, and one of the at one of the charity matches uh, was introduced uh, through a friend. Uh, hold on, was it that? Yes, I think so. That that's how it that's how it looked. And you know, I, I we shook hands. I told him what we're doing, and then as a joke, I suggested, you know, how about you play for my team. And he said, yeah, of course, I'll do it. No problem. <laughs> so it was probably one of my easiest uh, contract negotiations <laughs> in my history as, uh, as, the, as the CEO of, of a volleyball club because this guy is just super, you know, volleyball passionate. For He would do everything he can to develop and grow the sport that gave him so much in his life and to the sport that he committed so much so much in his life so uh you know we we knew that we have him as a as a supporter uh we just needed to find the right way of making him you know visible and and, and seen in uh in england we we knew that you know we will uh, have to organize something special uh, for for him to to come back to court, so uh, you know we organized this this super match uh, as the final match in um, 2017, uh, 2018, 2019 season, I think. Okay. In 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 the same venue in London that we played the Challenge Cup match. Again, we sold out. Again, you know, through our uh, already existing partnership with Polsat, we were able to broadcast it, you know, on Polsat. And Jiba is a huge personality uh, in volleyball, but also, but majority, you know, a lot of people in in Poland remember him when uh, Brazil was beating Poland on in all those, you know. Uh, world League matches, is, and yeah. uh, you know he is he is a real icon in Poland. That's why he was you know supporting this this charity in, in Poland. So this match again got a got a huge uh, viewership numbers. And uh, what helped was that that at the time we already confirmed English 
uh, volleyball champion. So whatever happened, we would we would be crowned <laughs> and got medals after this match. But we managed to win it as well. And um, yeah, I have to say again that was that was a big uh, challenge for the for the club. But you know, Jiba made it so much easier. He's you know he, he's such a lovely guy, such a hardworking person. And uh, yeah, for for the players, for, for he has all the time in the world for the players from our team and from the opposition for the media for the sponsors and for the fans and you know that's and and, and then he is great at volleyball <laughs> so he's a full package and i think that's uh, that that that's how you describe a a real great volleyball person you know it's not only about playing it's also what you do in your life off court and honestly i've seen english volleyball players who's got 10% of time for fans of that what Jiba has and you know that that helps and I think he's a really genuine and honest uh, superstar okay all right volleyball 2.0 when did when did that come up when did you start um, I don't you might have been thinking about it you know well in advance but when did it start to become a thing that you were talking about aggressively and actively uh, and you know what what is that so after two seasons of sponsorship uh, with IBB, the builders, merchants, Jacek Ambrosio, the owner, being a you know businessman, he says, "So that's it. You know, you did everything for me. You, you, you could. You were English champions. You know, you are playing in uh, in the Challenge Cup. That's it. I, you know, I'm no, I'm no longer that. You know, and you are asking me for more more money. You know." Because I was asking for more money. <laughs> Why? Why am I supposed to give you more money? I'm like, oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> but b b before he told me that, I know he had ideas in his head. And, you know, what we, we had to do, we had to turn itself from a money-losing organization to a money-making organization. With that, we could, instead of attracting sponsorship money, we could attract investors' money. So Jacek said, okay, I will invest you know, millions in, in, into the club, but we need to do this and this and that, and that has to lead to this and that and that. So at the end, you know, there, 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 is, a, there, there is a profit. So Volleyball 2.0 is the philosophy that we, uh, that we live by, that we breathe by, and that we try to make happen is that a volleyball club in England becomes a sustainable self-financing business, volleyball event business. And I think when I was starting the adventure with volleyball 2012, I was very naive by thinking that volleyball is a business already all around the world, especially, you know, being Polish. I, you know, I watched the, one of the top leagues that we have uh, in Poland, Plus Liga, Polish national team was, you know, the, the, the players were superstars. So I thought it, you know, it has to be that, that, that it has to be the case with all the clubs, at least in Poland, in the professional league. You know, later I learned that, you know, a lot of finances that, you know, come through the club are, are public money, especially in Poland, uh, or support from local governments. I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but that's the reality in Poland. But in England, we could never get it. So instead of, uh, you know, giving up, we thought, okay, we change. We, we will change a bit our, uh, our attitude towards, towards money, towards what we're doing, uh, and, and, and how we are going to grow. Uh, so then again, club changed the legal um, status. We are now company limited by shares. So our sponsors are our shareholders. Uh, we have shareholders who are not our sponsors. Uh, we've started a crowdfunding, equity crowdfunding uh, campaign, capital at risk. <laughs> they keep telling us that whenever we mention that we have to say that capital is at risk and your investment can go up or down. <laughs> right. But you know, it was it was we just made it super easy for people to invest in the sport they love. But generally, the, the whole sport business is a bit of a crowdfunding. You know, fans buy tickets, fun buy fans buy merchandise, and that's how they support uh, the 
the businesses, but we wanted to go one step further. So we made this equity crowdfunding. Everyone can become a shareholder in the club right now. But the deal we have with our sponsors, and uh, we have amazing companies with us right now, in addition to IBB, uh, ESS, it's a company that uh, manufactures steel. Uh, we have Atlas, a big company from Poland, Poland, Boramax. Uh, they're all in building industry, as you see, because Jacek is helping to broker uh, those deals. Uh, but, but in general, Volleyball 2.0 is about being a commercially aware and successful operation. Uh, and as I say that, I know many people think, oh, it's crazy, or maybe they think it already exists. But even in Italy or even in Poland, where those clubs have millions, you know, of, 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 of budgets at their disposal, the revenues are maybe up to five, maybe 10%, meaning non-sponsorship revenues. Right. And I think if you look at, especially in the States, you know, the franchises in basketball, you know, f f football. But here in England, we have, you know, premiership. Those clubs are entertainment businesses, and we want to be an entertainment business as well. We are an, an entertainment business. But we had to learn this very quickly after we thought there would be support from, from the city. We, we, we don't get any. Right. You know, even Fino Kaposvar, you know, in 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 in, in uh, Hungary, they they you know they have limited resources. But you know, some time ago, I, I read an article that their junior program at least is supported up to a you know a few hundred thousand euro from the local the local city. Right. And you know, at least they get a venue that's purpose built, and you know, they just open the door, turn the lights on. Hey, you can play volleyball. When yeah. I open my court. There is already someone playing badminton, you know, the, 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 and my time starts at two. I get in, my crew gets in, you know, we, we have to roll out and we have to pay commercial rates for that. So initially it, it was a big problem for us that we are in this market that seems to be tougher than other markets in the world. But we thought we turn it into our advantage. Instead of complaining, we will use this to our advantage. And I keep saying the volleyball has the advantage of, of a back backwardness because center certainly it has in England, but I think it, there is advantage in, of backwardness in, in, in a lot of volleyball markets because, you know, it's a huge sport as we all know, played by 900 million people around the world. But if you look at the commercial status of majority of the clubs of majority of the players, there is still a lot of things to be done. And this advantage of backwardness can lead to us leapfrogging few of the steps that other sports had to do or a few other mistakes they had to make, we can just avoid those mistakes. And if we all start working creatively and working together, we can make sure that, you know, in 10, maybe less years, volleyball is, it is, it is a successful uh, co commercial sport where, uh, you know, players are paid a lot of money. Fans get a lot of money worth a lot of experience, fun experience worth for their money. And that's what Volleyball 2.0 is about. It's about making sure that it's a sustainable business, uh, not reliant on, uh, on, on public support or public funds and something that leads to a uh, successful business agreement where sponsors are not with the sport because they like the sport or, you know, they just they are being told by someone else to support the sport. No, it's right. like those grown-up sports in the world, the big big sports in the world, uh, NBA, NHL. There, there are sponsors queuing outside for those deals. Right. And uh, we want to make it's like, yeah, it's a like that. Not a, not a commercial arrangement. Exactly. Uh, we've got a question that came in from Simon. Uh, the first part of it is, how did you decide what steps you'll take first or focus on first? Um, he's kind of suggesting first focus on sport or commercialization. I think you've, you've basically pretty much laid out that from the time you've been there, the focus has always been more on the business side of the equation and less on the sport side of the equation. The sport has just kind of followed along in terms of right, finding new opportunities to compete and things like that. The other part of the question is who's made these decisions? Um, you know, so who's, what's the leadership structure uh, look like? So whenever we have a shareholders meeting now, uh, our executive board meeting, uh, 
our first three points are how do we make money? How do we make money? And how do we make money? So that's how what we focus on right now. And so that's why I think business has to be uh, a priority. If you want to make it sustainable, you really have to have a strong uh, business uh, idea in place. Of course, playing sport is, is, is very important, but it's not about playing sport. It's not about playing volleyball, what we are doing. We are organizing successful commercial events that we just happen to be uh, someone happens to be playing volleyball but it's important that your players and your coaches are on board as well with that so they understand that they are not being left behind but we all together have to work hard to have you know better income because ultimately bottom line is the most important thing in every business uh, and you know, we need to develop the sport at the same time because the sponsors are basically more money means better results. Better results means more funds. More funds mean, means more money. So it's all interconnected. But when I arrived to IBB Polonia, the sport results were already there. I, we didn't have to do nothing. They're already there for England. So the next thing to, to focus on was, uh, was business. But if club, if any club in the world already exists, they have some sporting results already. So that's something to build on. What they could do is to maybe have a better conditions for the players, uh, attract a bit more uh, of good players or, or travel to more international tournaments. That all costs money. So I think, you know, sp sport is already what already exists in all the clubs. So the next thing for them would be to think about business. And in terms of structure, as I said, initially, it was very informal uh, group of friends uh, that were leading the club for 39 years. Yeah, amazing. I'm always very humbled by, you know, but, but, but when I learned how many people already played for IBB Polonia in, in, the, in the past and uh, how many people committed their time and money in, into the club. So it, it was a bit of a informal in, in thing so you know when i entered the the, the scene of the club uh, it was easy for them to say okay bring us some money because you know if i don't deliver they would be there would be nothing so but but i've delivered and i've decided to to push forward so uh you know everything had to be built but it was always we you, i always needed to have a person that's responsible for volleyball side so that, that was always important for me because I didn't even want to think about one extra thing, but I've never played volleyball. I, I don't have experience. So the, always you need to have a, a person you can trust who can take care of the ball, volleyball thing. But then you need a lot of non-volleyball people as well. And in England, it's a bit of a problem again because all of the clubs even in the highest, on the highest level, are run by you know, amazing volunteers. These people spend a lot of time and money to operate those clubs. But you, the, you can't expect a volleyball player to play volleyball, to train, and then all of a sudden to turn into a, a media person. So you need non-volleyball stuff as well. So the, 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 to answer, you know, the, the structure is that you, you, you need the volleyball side, but have a person who who tr you can trust, who deals with that and you, you asks you for the support whenever it's needed. But when everything is going on, you just, uh, it, it just happens there. And I was always very fortunate. Uh, you know, Chris Hickel, uh, the director of volleyball, he's been with the club for, for ages. <laughs> and when I entered the Chris, uh, Chris was, uh, Chris was coaching, but prior to that, Chris was, Chris was, uh, Chris was playing as well for IBP Polonia. Now he is uh, with us as a director of volleyball. So you, you need a person like that who understands the volleyball side. Uh, we have now, you know, we, we, had, we, we were always very lucky with coaches, very ambitious coaches. Uh, Piotr Graban, Simon Loftus, now Vangelis Kotuelas, uh, a Greek coach. For me, it's, I, you know, it's, it's very important to have this volleyball side taken care of. And the rest is, is, is business. So uh, you, you, you need a person to lead on that. And, you know, you can, you can build as much as you, 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 you can build 
that as big as you want really but we never have resources so the communication side is important someone to look after your uh, image the brand in social media that's very important uh, someone to you know to write press releases uh, i think yeah so that's that's i think that's where it all that's where it all starts but you know you need you need people to work on the club every day like i am now and then you need a bunch of of clever people who tell me uh, what to do and uh, i'm very lucky as well to have alex inglot uh, who is a board member of uh, atp and ex ibb polonia player who is a uh, strategic advisor uh, and our board member so yeah have I, I love to have clever professional people who, who tell me what to do sure all right let's move on to to last season and and the decision to to do champions league and you know that whole the whole build up to to playing that uh, that first round that qualification round um and you know all the work that went into that yeah Again, every year we wanted to be a bit better than last year. Not a bit, a lot. So we thought, okay, we won this uh, Nevzat trophy. Great. We, we, we have to win uh, that again or play in the, you know, in the, in the international tournaments. So uh, we knew that uh, playing international uh, CV tournaments on a, on every level on uh, any level has a certain you know financial requirements as we talked about before those requirements in champions league are not that different a majority of those requirements are, are not that different uh to challenge cup and you know we played challenge cup before so we couldn't enter that because we want to be as one step uh, forward and cv cup the second tier trophy you cannot enter as uh, from english league in the in in the in the in the leagues that are developed uh, or popular or successful like for example Ch uh, Poland Italy or Germany or others uh, there would be teams they would have a certain allocation of guaranteed spots in Champions League let's say two then one spot in CV Cup and then one spot in a Challenge Cup with us with uh, Volleyball England a federation that's not uh, you know, doesn't have a really any 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 points uh, that we would be given an automatic allocation. We can either enter Challenge Cup, which is the lowest level, or Champions League because they changed the rules recently. So every champion can enter the Champions League. So I thought, okay, Champions Champion League it is, and uh, you know, again a lot of a lot of costs, a lot of mistakes. Certain uh, then again, you, you know, you, you, the biggest problem we had was with the venue because the venue that we played Challenge Cup in became too small for the Challenge uh, Champions League requirements. So we had to go to a 6,000 seats arena in Olympic Park. Itself, huge cost. Uh, you know, that, that almost, yeah, that was a huge cost. Uh, and but the advantage or disadvantage, <laughs> the matches have to be broadcasters in Champions League every match. So the regulations say that the club is ultimately responsible for for the broadcast to happen. Of course, CV had a company in place already, a, a partner, media partner, sport radar, who was in charge of finding uh, interested broadcasters to every every club. But they didn't succeed in finding interested broadcaster for us in England. We were, of course, very disappointed because we thought this is you know, a super opportunity for every British volleyball and non-volleyball fan to watch high-level high volleyball from the Olympic Park with Gibbon court. But they didn't look at it like that, the broadcasters. So we had to pay for again for the, for the broadcast. But, you know, we had we had production company that we already cooperated with for, for a few years in place. So that wasn't that big of a surprise for us. Jiba confirmed uh, he, would be, uh, he would be available for London-based games. So we didn't fly him to, to the away games. And uh, there we, th th we started, you know, we built a... We build a we build a team of of, of players. Uh, we we've, we've started training. We put tickets on sale, and nothing happened. We thought that p p tickets will fly off the shelves, <laughs> but they didn't. So that was. Uh, 
you know we we, we obviously we had some marketing uh, campaigns in place uh, so in the end we managed to to sell 1200 tickets for this uh, for the whole match and that was supposed to be our money making opportunity because right. one of the reasons you know we we thought we'll enter champions league it's uh it's it you know it's it's champions league uh it's olympic park it's jiba yeah people will come to a certain extent you know we 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 got where we wanted with playing champions league uh because we got a bit of a media interest when i say a bit we were on bbc uh at 6 50 in the evening the news so that must have attracted uh, millions of viewers but it was a news piece not the match coverage something we really wanted to to have because we thought if if the match would be broadcasted on 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 the television in in, in britain you know our sponsors we got a huge return on investment uh we would be able to show uh, amazing venue copper box arena in olympic park uh you know to non-volleyball crowd as well uh, so so as you hear me talking you know i don't really focus on 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 the sports side i i focus on you know how we can take the opportunity that champions league gives us and and turn it into a, a further uh, opportunity but you know on, on the sport level the, the players were you know working very hard we were preparing very hard to all, all the matches we had uh, pre-season tournaments aligned you know when you play champions league uh, you get a lot of uh, friends but but generally if you are doing the right things you get a lot of friends in in, in volleyball as well so we are very grateful because noli komazik they invited us uh, for a preseason we we played them uh we we flew to to poland for a preseason mini camp in kanjezon kozle uh with the current uh, b- 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 polish volleyball champion grupa azoty zaksa kanjezon kozle they they you know they they allowed us to to camp there to use their venue for trainings and you know we played a match uh that was that was that was televised again uh against them and and directly from the, from poland we flew to um who did we play (laughs) (laughs) my mind went well blank here but (laughs) but we flew to croatia directly from poland so you know we gave ourselves we we, we've stepped up the training regime we we really did things we worked there as well we worked on this side as well uh a lot of you know players you know we've we've had a strength and conditioning coach along along the years you know from the core team being built up of the head coach and players you know we've added a strength and conditioning coach two assistants but you guys know all about it, so I don't really have to tell you how the good structure w- w- was work. But 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 you know we didn't throw we didn't throw the the team we had at the time totally at the deep end. We, we did in the end, <laughs> but we gave yeah. them you know a lot of training and and you know high level uh, friendly opportunities. So that was happening. But what I was really interested in how this is going to help the club to grow on the commercial level. How is going to media interest look? How many tickets we're going to sell? How many? How much profit we're going to make? Because the problem with the previous matches we played in Challenge Cup was that even if we sold out the arena, we would still lose money. Right. Same with same case with uh, with with Jiba match. We've sold out the arena. We lost money, but okay, we've gathered a lot of stuff but the balance was minus eight thousand pounds so we went to copper box arena six thousand seats we've calculated the costs we've calculated the potential profit we thought this is how it's going to look and at least we gave ourselves chance to uh, to make money unfortunately it didn't happen uh you know the tickets were too expensive the venue was too far um the, there was something else to do on wednesday evening um, so that's the excuses we were getting. So uh, I guess you know, and 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 you will lose. So you know, it's you you kind of hope that you know for whatever you're doing for the sport, you would get a bit more uh, support. But you know, we are very grateful to our fans. Of course, we get we get a lot of amazing fans, but we didn't manage to get with with the message we wanted to to the right amount of people who would be prepared. And the tickets were let's say a bit more than they usually are in in english volleyball but the, also the cost of venue was you know was, was huge uh so we 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 we, we wanted to recoup we recoup our costs but but that didn't happen we flew to well we first 
played some inter- some amazing international matches as i said mazaik uh, in poland in, in in croatia so we were we were feeling strong we were looking good we flew to croatia we lost 3-0 uh, but you know it showed us also we we you know how the setup over there looked you know mlados zagreb you know amazing you know team with with a huge tradition and but you know they have their own venue they open the you know the front door they turn the lights on there it is let's play champions league <laughs> you know the venue is ready and it's it's theirs whereas right. with me you know i i had to you know every i had to bring everything in the venue was telling me there will be extra storage costs if you don't really remove it after the event it's it's a totally different setup but when you compare what happened off court to uh, compare croatia to to london you know we won what we did we made sure that we have the best djs that they are they are currently working in sports the people who i saw for the first time in lille at the vnl finals i just fell in love you know it was a party you you you, you didn't like volleyball you were you were just by accident in, in in the venue but you had a great time because the the the, the music they were they were and the announcing they were they were doing so we we managed to get these these people in so the, the show was amazing prior to that we organized of course you know uh, some corporate uh, entertainment for sponsors uh, we had a stretch hammer picking them up from 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 their from their businesses that took them uh, to appear in in london on the thames river we we had a cruise charter cruise dinner with party for you know all of our sponsors shell holders um, businesses if, if future investors as well so you know we made sure there's and jiba was there of course uh, you know high level businesses and you know politicians from 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 foreign office we we had the co- ambassador not not ambassador but the consul from the croatian uh croatian embassy as well so we wanted to make sure this is a a big business affair so by doing all this stuff we have money to do all the on-court stuff and that's why it's very important and uh i think that's why volleyball 2.0 uh is our philosophy because you know money don't you know if if you get money to your club because it's a political decision one phone call and a political decision will be changed if the business you are working with call him your sponsor is making profit out of being with you they won't leave you because they want to carry on making this profit so yeah that, you know there was an amazing night the, the the cruise you know 100 people on the river thames and then they all moved on uh, the next day or they they moved to the copper box arena uh 1200 people so you know not really 6000 we were hoping for but uh you know a lot of, of final media interest press interest because british media understand champions league so we got a bit more uh media interest that we would usually get quite a lot as i say um i would say and then we lost 3-0 uh i think you know judging by from from those matches that we played against mazay that we played against zaxa you know we were able to perform but it was just you know not to be but then again you know you are really playing well on your first match in the champions league that's something one of the reasons why we wanted to play champions league for the first time so we get it out of the way we make all the mistakes on court and in off court so the next year we do it uh we will do it ag- again uh, much better so so then as then as the club that lost a champions league in the round one, uh, we got down to uh, CEV Cup. Uh, we were playing, I was slightly disappointed. Again, the same team we played two years before or three years before in, in the Challenge Cup. So Dreisma Dynamo in Holland. Uh, requirements were a bit smaller, so we managed to play it in the smaller venue in Crystal Palace uh, in England, in London. But, you know, we were very financially deflated after the champions league (laughs) sort of adventure so you know we were of course fighting on court uh but when we didn't progress further it was a bit of a relief as well because the next play team that dreisma had to play uh was the club from russia Mm-hmm. I forgot the name again. I'm not good with teams' uh, <laughs> names today. But basically a team from Siberia. 
Yeah. The, the team that won the English, uh, the, the Russian league this year, uh, with, with Jizz guys, etc. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. So you know, it's a nice trip to it's a nice trip to Siberia for you. You know, yeah. 24 yeah. hours on the in the airports <laughs> on the flights, and you yeah. have probably yeah. you only know probably what three weeks before you travel that you have to make all the arrangements. So you know, for a small organizations like organization like mine, that takes a lot of resources. That takes a lot yeah. of you know money as well to organize everything in you know to make everything right. uh, make, make everything right. So you know, they Drysma went there. Uh, they 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 lost, uh, but um, that was our that was our adventure. But the Champions League, Giba, the event in Copper Box Arena, the DJs, uh, the media interest, uh, you know, the the corporate side of that. Fi finally, we were able to deliver something for to our sponsors and and partners and investors. That's that is really attractive. Was very important part of that. So we lost on court, but you know we were happy because we delivered off court and off court. We beat. We we can. Ch I think off court we can challenge almost every team in the world in terms of what right. we can organize. Nova Sibiris. That's that's who. That's who you would have played the Russian team, according to uh, post in the chat. <laughs> okay, thank you. And, and I do think I remember that. Um, what are your thoughts on? Yeah, you know, I remember this being a big discussion at the time of you know the cost of the ticket. And obviously, you had a, you had an economic decision to make there in terms of the cost of the arena, and you know how much revenue you need to try to generate. Um, do you think, it, at the end of the day, the ticket prices made a huge difference in in the attendance, and would it have mattered anyway from a revenue perspective if you had chopped ticket prices, gotten more people? I mean, would it have? Would you have actually made more revenue, or would you have made less revenue, net, net, and all you know those sorts of things? Well, I think we made the right business decision, uh, long term, because we we've set our bar where we can break even if we sell enough tickets. To we are volleyball to zero is 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 not a is not a charity. It's not a sports hall that we will open for free just to get the crowds in. And I think that's the problem of, 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 of volleyball in many, many countries. They undervalue uh, the, the, themselves. They, they don't value uh, uh, the, the product they have. Uh, and, and, you know, you are not giving yourself to make money if, if we do it. So I, I would defend the decision to make prices, you know, we, we're talking about 30 pounds and we are in London, okay? I know it's volleyball, but it's Champions League. It's a copper box arena. You have Giba on court and, you know, basketball league match that's happening in this same venue would probably cost you 23 pounds. Um, and basketball in England is something quite far away from you have in in in, in, in the in the states. So we were maybe putting a bit more more you know a bit more premium on 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 that. But you know if if you look at you know West End shows or Broadway shows, uh, you know people pay a lot of money good to get in there because it's a one-off opportunity to see something that's truly the best in the city or in many cases in the world. So whereas we still, we still know that on court, we are unable to uh, call themselves the best uh, in the world. Off court, we think we can aspire to, to, to be one of the top volleyball uh, parties or events in Europe and in London. So, so prior to that, to experience something like that from the fan perspective, you would have to fly or hop on the train to continental Europe and probably go to somewhere like Belgium where you know champions league or uh, league matches in in mosaic ruslar or you know uh, they, they, they 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 look similar so nice proper built venues so if you think about it the cost would be much more than that so in short term we would probably get a bit more people to the venue we would certainly get a bit less hate posts on facebook <laughs> 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 but 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 long term, uh, we would be in a position where we are already starting from the, ah, uh, we are, we, there is no value in what we do. 
and people will just say, you know, we, again, we lost badly on the sport level in the Champions League year one. So in year two, we can perform better. And we lost badly in terms of hate from our fans in year one from, for the prices. So we can at least try and make profit in year two. If we set the prices at five pounds, you know, let's say we sell out the whole arena. That's, uh, uh, that, that's 6,000 seats. So you're looking at 30,000 pounds. The whole cost of Champions League was 100,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so so and that's the reality of london i'm i'm, I'm trying i'm just trying people to understand that that what, what the reality here is they get they get saying oh it's too expensive you should let people in for free if you let people in for free they they won't start paying down the line right. you should be asking sponsors to cover the costs of, 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 of the whole of course but how, how do we make it sustainable that way so yeah we we, we took the decision i will defend that uh, luckily there's only chat today, so people cannot challenge me on, on, on that in, in any other way. And I, you know, the crowd here is probably friendly and, you know, they, they, they probably understand much more what it takes to, to, to put a show like that in, in, in you know, in, when, anywhere in the world, but especially in London, where everything we do has to be top class. And uh, we compete against Premiership, we compete against West End, we compete against, against the best theatres. So we really had to make sure that the off-court presentation of everything was, uh, was attractive. And, and, and it was people who went there. I mean, the sound system we had in place, the DJs we had in place, uh, the, the entertainment, the lights, the, the pyrotechnics we had in place was, you know, something really out of this uh, top 10 in the world in terms of volleyball events for sure. All right, let's talk about moving forward. You know, what's, what's the plan? Huh. And, and what's going on with the, uh, you know, with where does, where does Polonia and volleyball fall in, in the landscape of the whole sporting situation now trying to, trying to bond and, and react to COVID-19 and, and just where society is going to be when everything starts to, I don't know, normalize, if that's going to be the right word. Well, I just looked at the time. I, 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 apologies to you know taking so much of your time guys but big thank you as well to to stay in and, and watching to this i hope you find okay. this interesting and really you know if you have any questions you know uh maybe apart from why tickets were so expensive just you know <laughs> post them in the in the q a section of the of the webinar and i will try to answer them very quickly and um, but also i'm also very pleased that for an hour and 23 minutes we managed to avoid <laughs> covid uh, word and yeah. you know prior to that we had brexit now we have covid here so uh, you know, if you ask me what's next, uh, b before, before the lockdown, uh, our plan was, of course, to do one step uh, better, as always, um, be the commercial or on the sport level. Uh, this, this year, we, we've, next season, we want to, to progress one extra round in, in Champions League. Uh, to, 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 to pro progress a bit further. And only yesterday, we found out officially that CEV, European Volleyball Confederation actually cancelled the remainder of the Champions League season 2020. Uh, so we at least know that that won't be delayed further down in the season. So sure. probably come October or whenever we are okay to play again, uh, the qualifications for the new season will, will start and we will participate in that. Uh, you know, we will, and then the next step would be for us to go one round uh, further. So to win. Uh, two matches and then go, go further, see what happens. You know, if you look at uh, what what the whole sport situation looks like in the world, no one will be able to tell us how it's going to look. But I joke that we were prepared in England for what's happening right now. I'm now in my uh, bedroom. I my I, We don't have offices. We were always working remotely. I've only yeah. realized that in 2014, we've started using project management, online project management tool. And, and since then, it's, it's still in place. So we have data from the past six years, what we've been doing. And that's important as well, uh, that you, you have a track of, 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 of topics, of discussions. So whatever mistakes we made in the past. So we were always working remotely. We never had that many fans in the, in the venue. 
and look at other sports that are struggling because they have no funds. Hey, we never had any funds. We didn't have big broadcasters, you know, chasing us for our matches. Now big clubs are struggling as well because they have no nowhere to show their matches. And but that's for for me, it was it was normal. So I think in many ways we were, you know, this this is this is for me uh, a, a normal situation. But you know, just joking. But basically, I always operate on the edge of. Is it going to kill us or is it going to make us successful? And, uh, you know, that's the reality for all the people, in all the businesses in the world. Uh, it's, uh, it's very important that we all, you know, stay or follow the, uh, follow the advice from the government, stay, stay at home. So, uh, in fact, in, on, you know, the Volleyball England League was postponed, well, cancelled for this season on the 16th of March. But uh, we, we've sent a letter to volleyball and asking to do it on the 14th of March because we, we just knew it's impossible to finish all the matches. And I'm very yeah. grateful to Volleyball England that they you know, made the right decision very quick because it saved us a lot of stress. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I couldn't imagine what we would be doing with, with my players if we were still thinking maybe we'll play down the line in June, July, whatever. You know, at least they took a decision, okay, we finish it right now. We were lucky we were at the top of the of, of, of the league and, and undefeated we were in the final of the english volleyball club so there was a good chance we could get that as well as a trophy so you know we, we didn't we didn't complain but the, the majority of, of people just wanted the decision to finish so they can focus on their well-being and their family's well-being and you know on the 16th of March in England, it, it, it sounded very scary because I hope right now, you know, NHS in England or, and, you know, medical professionals around the world are, are doing a good job and the public is helping by staying indoors. So hopefully in England, it won't be as dramatic as, 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 as we were worried at the time. But at the time, we were expecting up to half a million deaths in England itself, in the United Kingdom. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot. I think right now, sadly, around 20,000 people died and we are hoping to, to go down. So, but at the time to think about even training and playing volleyball later, it would be crazy. So that finished, um, you know, we've, uh, we've, uh, we, we have a contract with our head coach, Vangelis Cotuelas, for another two seasons at least. Uh, we are putting the team together. A majority of uh, players, I understand, are ready in talks with our coach and and you know if if you think if you ask me you know it's as i said it, it, it's business as usual because the season would be, be over anyway anytime right now and we would look to retail return to business in 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 uh, in august we will see what will happen to you know businesses um, our sponsors investors but you know the, uh, tough times like that are an opportunity as well and i think for small, agile, not lazy, and brave organizations, be it in business or anywhere else, almost like a startups, because for many years, <laughs> that sounds crazy, we are a startup for many years, but you know, we try to have this, uh, this mindset at IBB Polonia that we are a startup. We don't need you know, uh, AGM to be called with hundreds of shareholders to make a small decision. We just pick up a phone, Yes, we do it, uh, because why not? So I think for organizations who are able to move like that, react quickly, that would be a new new opportunity. And I, and I would like to see volleyball benefiting a bit uh, from this sport reset. For many reasons, there are opportunities, you know, for example, broadcasters, they are, they are struggling for content. Whoever will be able to return, of course, following the guidance from, uh, from, from the officials, to broadcast in some some sport will po probably be a winner. Whether they can return retain this uh, interest from from the media long term after all the, all the sports return to normal, that's the question. But at least they would be given an opportunity to to access the media uh, or live sports channels uh, that normally would be out of their reach because we would be pushed out as volleyball by other sports you know uh, so i think that's one of the opportunities uh, for my club i think you know as i said initially it's very easy to make uh small changes that easy changes or cheap changes at the very beginning of your road uh, as to, to to development of the club uh, because they make big differences so what, right now for me it's even possible to double my budget 
from the last from the last season. Whereas if you are Lube, if you are uh, Zaksa in Poland or PG is Kraj in Poland, or maybe if you are Zenit Kazan, you can always double your budget. But if you operate, that's that's but that's the perfect example, uh, Kazan. What volleyball 2.0 is not, you know. Yeah. You know, Gazprom money. It's a phone call. Right. It's a phone call money. It's a it's a yeah. helicopter money. You know, it's great. I, I love I love what they do. I love the I love the people from the sport. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but it's not sustainable and that's something not something we can do in London, certainly. So um yeah, I can double my budget. Other Lube, they probably won't be able to double the budget. So for me, this is the time where I can catch up with with, with them a bit because they are a bit insecure, a bit uneasy. You know, players, there will be some players looking for, you know, new opportunities, new contracts. And, uh, you know, the, the contract will be smaller as well. So that's right. the, and you know, what we're also doing, it's very important, sorry to interrupt. I think, you know, we, we are starting an academy for, for juniors in London, something I always wanted to do, something that we, we tried to do before, but this time it's uh, going to be a bit different and very much, I think, important because there will be a full-time education uh, working towards your uh, A levels, which is the, the the exam that gets you grades you can get to university in England, mixed with high level volleyball. So IBB Polonia will be responsible for the volleyball delivery of that. My head coach will be the head coach of the academy, and then there will be people, you know, kids will be getting uh, full time education uh, in England uh, in English, uh, and the next step for them would be you know high level volleyball clubs. And or great universities as well. Uh, I think you know a lot of people from England dreams about uh, studying, dream about studying in United States. This is perfect opportunity for them. So we are looking for 15 boys aged 16 and 17 right now. Uh, they will start this this education, and you know if my club benefits from that, that's great. But I think English volleyball we benefit from that. Hopefully, English national team will benefit from that as well. And I think this will lead to a bigger uh, recognition of volleyball in the media because ultimately this is very important. Okay. In terms of wanting to be able to take that next step in the Champions League, obviously that means having higher quality in the squad. Uh, and you've talked about how when you first got there, most of the players, all the players, had professional occupations outside of volleyball. And now you've, you know, you've, you've worked on shifting things. Where, where do you see that going forward in terms of kind of reaching to the point where potentially it's a full, full-time, fully professional team? Well, if we manage to double our budget, uh, I think we would be in a position to do that. So it's even possible this year. But the problem with London is that everything here is very expensive. So the accommodation is very expensive. The travel is very expensive. Uh, so it's not very easy here. Uh, we are looking at, you know, options of maybe moving out, uh, you know, from London just for trainings where we could, you know, camp players somewhere that's much cheaper. Because, you know, uh, you know I, our venue is in the, in, in the area where probably – average property price would be around two million pounds and this property would be probably around a hundred square meters so that's around thousand square feet so you know that's 200 to two million pounds for a thousand square feet that's uh, that would probably around four million no, no, that would be around three million. I don't know what dollar what dollar costs. You can you can guys check, look it up. But it's very expensive. It's very expensive. You know, one bedroom flat. You know, five hundred square feet. Something that you would have to offer one player, uh, and maybe a family if he comes with a family. But that's a standard option. You would probably cost me around two thousand pounds a month for one player, just accommodation. Right. So, you know, multiplied by number of players, multiplied, you know, add, add coaches and everything. And you are then looking at, you know, just for the accommodation of, you know, a, a, a huge budget. That's something that the, that the clubs with our, that are positioned in other smaller cities don't have the problem. But then they don't have an advantage as well of, you know, high uh, earning, high disposable income funds uh, that we are hoping to, to attract. So, you know, it, it would be silly for us to just m make this uh, s 
step almost overnight from you know four or five trainings a, a week in the evening because it, there there is no point, especially for uh, English league right now. For the Champions League, we are looking at options of maybe dividing a season in two, um, having some players uh, on contract with us uh, just for the Champions League period, where 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 their salaries, you know, would be uh, able to cover majority of, of of those costs that that we are talking about. But you know. I'm coming back to having a great coach or a great, a great volleyball people in, in, in charge. We think to be able to recruit clever people who are, uh, you know, recognizing the opportunity that we are giving them and they, would be, they wouldn't be asking for, for uh, super high money. But the reality of volleyball players is, is that, that, you know, their salaries are generally low compared to other sport, professional sports. So majority of, 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 of players are, are not... Uh, you know, on, on super high salaries, and then we have an addition of of value in London. You know, a lot of some of our players would be uh, studying here, uh, so you know th that would take away some of their uh, time commitments because they wouldn't be working. You know, full time they would be studying here full time, but that means you know I don't know five five hours a week I think <laughs> at, at universities in England here. Uh, but yeah. And and, 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 and and you know some of our, our some of our players uh, would would like to come to London or, or you know maybe they, they can they can do a bit of work. We we are looking at you know creative ways of, of, of trying and allowing players to, to mix their professional careers and their volleyball careers. And I'm I'm not always looking at this as a disadvantage uh, because you know majority of volleyball players won't get rich enough. To retire after their volleyball careers, they'll have to do something. So, if, if, if they're you know keen to do that, develop their parallel career, and you know we can then give them opportunity to you know uh, run a volleyball career alongside that. I think that's the perfect match. And you know it's 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 still a case in in many clubs in many volleyball leagues that players are working. You know, or working or working, meaning, you know, just spending time at, at the sponsors' uh, right. offices. But in, even in Japan, you know, where you have Panasonic sponsoring, you know, players are required, I think, to spend three days a week at the factory. And I think that's great. Because it, but it shows the respect. It shows I don't know if they are actually working though, or what they are doing. But <laughs> it 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 prepares them for the career after their volleyball career. And I think it's not a bad thing to do. So as been in London, quite a few good schools around here, quite a few companies to choose from. You know, so if they're if they're prepared, and what I found is that the employers like uh, sportsmen as well. Yeah. Because you know they work hard. Our team players, yeah. they know how to get better. So we, we that's how we try to do it like that. So if we are able to you know offer a player a package where there is a bit of a volleyball money. There is a you know nice opportunity to do something for your later career. And you are in London, which is not uh, the most boring city in the world. Then you know then they they would be attractive. So we would wait with turning the key on you know 100% professional because for, for for now we don't need that. And unless you know we start performing very well in in Champions League and the rewards are that uh, because I have to say that CV is yet to announce. Uh, the details of the new deal, marketing deal or media deal they signed recently with a new company for the next, I think, 13 years of Champions League. And that wow. promises to change the reality of, of financial requirements towards the clubs and, and potential rewards available for the clubs as well in terms of uh, uh, prize money. And, you know, if that becomes attractive enough, then we will be investing more, we'll be, you know, gambling because there will be a high level potential uh, you know financial reward at the end of that okay uh, oliver's got a question about the academy he wants to know how do you finance it uh, who's paying for the education the lodging the training facilities and and that sort of thing all right so the academy is actually a part of of, of english uh, secondary education 
which is free at the point of delivery. So it's free to, to students. Uh, we've entered a, a, into an agreement with the charity called Future Stars, and, and they are in charge of delivering the, the education. And also the partnership extends a bit further to a, to a college, uh, West London College, they're called uh, uh, Norhold High School. So they will, they will be delivering the, it's the, the, they were basically looking for a marketing or sales for, for a reason to people to study at their college. So they were looking for partners, add something else. So we are adding volleyball because, you know, uh, schools compete against each other. So it's, it's, it's paid by a British taxpayer. As, uh, as all education up to, you know, all the secondary, up to a secondary education, so up till 19 years old uh, in England is free, apart from private schools, but, but this is a public, public school. But in terms of lodging, there is no provision for that. Uh, so the players would have to be, uh, you know, able to, to travel and, and or, or live, live in London. Uh, so so there, is, there is no on-site uh, hostel or hotel like that you know we, we have a backup plan uh, that we would look at host families but I, I think from from what I know from my coaches right now I think we have enough London based boys interested for the for the program to to start okay yeah um, for those who don't know in England when they say college is not the same as when they say it in the US England and college <laughs> basically means the last two years of high school when the students are prepping for the A levels, so whereas obviously college in this in the states is after high school, so just that can be confusing for people who aren't aware. So keep that in mind. Um, okay, I hope that answers Oliver's question. Um, that's the, uh, would right at this point. If anybody else has any more questions, shoot them in. Um, otherwise, uh, is there anything that we haven't hit on so far that you think you know? final points or anything like that you'd like to toss in well you know as always big thank you to to the you know to our fans to our sponsors uh, to our investors uh, for the trust they are putting into us uh, yeah let's let, let's make it happen uh, let's use all the opportunity and uh, you know let's not regret anything it's, it's it's a big adventure now now everything is possible in, in the world so uh, let's take the opportunity, guys. And yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching closely what's happening, you know, in, in United States, uh, in, in volleyball. I, I, I support 100% uh, universities. I, w I would love to see, you know, a, a league there maybe, because I, I, I think, you know, if, if something meaningful commercially would happen in volleyball in, in the US, it would be, an, you know, an, an amazing thing uh, that we would all benefit from.